Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, part 3 video of Form 4 Additional Mathematics Chapter 5 Progressions. In this video, we're going to look at geometric progressions, which is the second type of progressions. So before that, we try to look at this given two series of numbers here, 2, 5, 8, 11, 2, 6, 18, 50, 54. So I did both of this sequence, for the first series here, we consider this as a sequence because of the pattern of adding 3, meaning that when we have 2 times uh, plus 3, you get 5, 5 plus 3, you get 8, 8 plus 3, you get 11, and so on. So this type of progression we already learned in a previous video is called as arithmetic progression. And how about the second sequence here? Is this a sequence? The answer is yes, because for the next or the following term, you multiply 3 to the previous number. So 2, you multiply 3, you get 6. 6 multiplied, multiplies by 3, you get 18. Multiplies by 3, you get 54, and so on. So this is also considered as a sequence, because for the next term, you just multiply the previous term by 3. And for this type of progression, we call this as a geometric progression, where you get the following terms by multiplying the, the previous term with a number. If arithmetic progression, we add. If geometric progressions, we multiply. So the definition here is, a geometric progression is a sequence of numbers where each term is obtained by multiplying a constant. So the constant for this case is 3 with the previous term. So now we try to identify this given series here. Is this a geometric progression? So we look at 3 and 15. If we multiply 3 by 5, you get 15. If you multiply 15 by 5, you get 75. So each of the following terms here is multiplied by 5. Hence, this is a geometric progression. And this 5 here, these values here, we name it as common ratio. If we refer back to the previous example, for this case, the common ratio will be the value or the number 3. This is the common ratio for this geometric progression. We look at more examples. So the common ratio is the ratio of the two consecutive terms. So how do we find the values of a common ratio which is denoted by R here? We take the second term, divide by the first term or the third term divided by the second term, and so on, or the nth term divided by n minus 1 term. So we look at more examples on how to find the common ratio. Okay, so now determine the common ratio for the following geometric progression. So for this given geometric progression, we want to find the common ratio, which is denoted by R. So to find common ratio, we use the formula here, R equals to the second term over the first term, or any term divide by the previous term. In this case, second term is 6, so the previous term will be the first term, which is 2. Okay, so 6 divided by 2. You get 6 over 2, which is 3. Meaning that 2 times 3, you get 6. 6 times 3, you get 24. Hence, when you divide this number with your previous term, you get common ratio. We try again. 50, 10, 2, this is a given geometric progression. We want to find the common ratio. We take the second term, divide by the first term. So 10 divided by 50, you get 1 over 5. So 1 over 5 is actually 0 0.2. You can have a common ratio in fraction or the decimal forms, and it can be less than the value of 1. Okay. So when you see here, when it is less than 1, 0 0.2 is less than 1, the values will decrease. When r is bigger than 1, like for example 3 here, the values increases. Because with this number, when you multiply this by 0 0.2, it will decrease 10. 10 multiplied by 0 0.2, you get 2, and so on. Example 2, determine whether the following is a geometric progression. Okay, the previous example, you are given geometric progression, you need to find common ratio. Now in this example 2, we don't know whether this is a geometric progression or not. We need to determine whether it is or it isn't. Okay, so given this series of number, if we want to determine whether they are geometric progression, we use the common ratio to help us. We find the common ratio for the first two terms. Okay, so you get 18 divided by 54, you get 1 over 3. If this is a geometric progression, the value of r will be the same 
throughout the whole series. So if we want to find the common ratio for the next two terms, which is the third term and the second term, we take 6 divided by 18. Okay, so R2, the second common ratio here, R2, the second ratio here, it, you take 6, the third term divided by the second term, 6 over 18. They have the same value. Since R1 equals to R2, the ratio is the same, hence they have a common ratio. The conclusion, this is a geometric progression. One more example here, 5, 3, 1, negative 1. Okay, we want to determine whether this is a geometric progression or not. So first we find the ratio between first, second term and the first term, 3 divided by 5. So since this is already simplified, we leave it here. We go to the next ratio, 1 divided by 3. And we don't have to continue since the first ratio and the second ratio here are different. Hence, this is not a geometric progression since these two are not equal. Number three, given that this x minus one, 2, x plus 1, for x plus three, 4 are three consecutive terms in a geometric progression. So now we know that this is a given geometric progression. We want to find the positive value of x and then list the first three terms. After we find the value of values of x, we calculate this value, this value and this value, the first three values, and we state the common ratio. So to find the values of x here, since this is a given geometric progression, so it has a common ratio, meaning that the ratio, the value of the ratio will be the same, which is constant. So if we take the second term divided by the first term, the value is the same as the third term divided by the second term. So you get this x plus 1 for the second term divided by x minus 2 first term. 4x plus 4 divided by the second term, which is x plus 1. So they are equal because they have the same ratio. They have a common ratio. Now we just have to simplify or we just have to solve this to find the value of x. Then we can find the rest of the answers. Okay, so we just cross multiply here. You get this. Expand this, expand this, you get this. Then we simplify it, this. This can be further simplified by dividing 3 to all the terms. And now we factorize this. Hence, we know that x is either negative 1 or x is 3. Since we want to take the positive value, we want the positive value of x here. We take x equals to 3. So since x is 3 here, we substitute 3 into this. 3 minus 2, you get 1. 3 plus 1, you get 4. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 4, you get 16. So you get 1, 4, and 16. So you get 1, 4, and 16. And to find a common ratio, we take 4 divided by 1, which is 4. Now we look at finding the nth term for any terms in a given geometric progression. So we try to form the formula to find Tn. To form the formula, we start off with the first term. Okay, T1 is always equal to A, the first term. And how do we get T2, the second value? We take a multiplies by the common ratio to get the second term, which is a times r, which is equals to a r. To find the third term, we take the second term multiplied by r to find the third term. So the second term is given as a r, a r here, so a r times r. So here you get a r squared. To find the next term, again you multiply the third term, or this, you multiply this by r, and you get a r cubed. So from this series here, what pattern can you form? If I want to find Tn, okay, where n is the number of terms here, how do I form the formula using this? You can see that a is always present. And r, where the value of the power is always 1 less than this. Okay, 3 is 1 less than 4. 2 is 1 less than 3. Here, 1 is less than 2. Hence, we get the formula is a r n minus 1. So we are going to use this formula to help us to find the nth term for any given geometric progression, provided that we find a, the first term, and also we need to find the value of r, which is the common ratio. We look at the example. Find the sixth term, t6, yeah, of each of the following geometric progressions. So the first geometric progression given this. To find the sixth term, T6, we need to use the formula T6. To use this formula, first we need to find A and R. So A is the first term, which is 81. R is the common ratio, where we take the second term, 
divide by the first term, 27 over 81. Or if you want to if you want to take third term, 9 divided by 27, you also get the same value, which is 1 over 3. It's the same. So now since we already have a and r, a and r here, if you want to find t6, it is equals to 81 times 1 over 3 to the power of 6 minus 1. Hence, you get this. Use your calculator, find the value of this, you get t6 equals to 1 over 3. Next question here, we don't have a value, but we have x to the power of 2, to the power of 5, and x to the power of 8. In order to find the sixth term, t6, again, we need to find a and r. a is x squared, r is x5, x to the power of 5 over x squared. So 5 to the minus 2, you get x to the power of 3. We substitute all this into the formula, you get t6 equals to a, here, and r is x to the power of 3, n minus 1, n is 6, okay? So we simplify this, you get 6 minus 1 is 5 times 3, you get 15. And here you plus, you add 2 to 15, you get 17. So now we have example 5 here. In terms of n, find the nth term. So now we're going to find tn. Okay, tn of each of the following geometric progressions. So to find tn, in terms of n, we need to replace a and r with the values. a is 3 over 2, the first term. R is 1 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, where you get 1 over 3. Substitute this into the formula, you get this. Then you simplify this. Okay, minus 1 here actually means divided. 1 over 3 to the power of n minus 1 here means 1 over 3 to the power of n divided by 1 over 3. So when you divide, you get this. Okay, negative 1 means ne divided by 1 over 3. So you simplify this get this. So a lot of the students will make this common mistake where the 9 and 3, they cancel. You cannot do this because over 3 here is under the power of n. Example 6, find the number of terms in each of the following geometric progressions. Means that from k, k to the power of 4, k to the power of 7, until k to the power of 22, how many terms are there? So we have first term, second term, third, fourth, until k to the power of 22. We need to find how many terms are they all together here? So again, if we involve number of terms, number of terms here, we need to use the formula for finding the nth term. So in this case, we need to find the value of a. We need to find the value of r, which is k to the power of 4 min, uh, divided by k. You get k. You get k to the power of 3. So in this case, we want to find the value of n. Hence, the nth term, the tn here will be the last value, which is k to the power of 22, because this, this is the nth term. And we are looking for n, which represents the number of terms. Okay, so this is tn. So k to the power of 22 equals a is k, r is k to the power of 3. You simplify this to find n. Okay, to simplify this, we first multiply 3 to n minus 1, you get 3n minus 3. And we have a multiply by k here actually means plus 1 to the power. So negative 3 plus 1 because of the k here, okay, plus 1, you get 3n minus 2. Since they have the same base by comparison of the indices, 22 equals to 3n minus 2. You learn this in chapter 4. And we solve n, we get 22 plus 2 divided by 3 which is 8. The value here must be an integer because n is an integer. If you get values other than integer, something must be wrong in your solutions. Okay, so n must be an integer, a positive integer. Example 7. Find the smallest term of the geometric progressions 3, 6, 12 that exceeds 20. Okay, we want to find the smallest term n, which is the value of n, so that the geometric progression exceeds the value of 20. So we want we are using since we are involving the terms here, we use the value, we use the formula here. For this, a equals to 3, r equals to 6 over 3, which is 2. So now we want the value of the terms which is more than exceeds 20, more than 20. So it means Tn is more than 20. So Tn greater than 20. And we replace Tn with the formula ARN-1, where A is 3, R is 2. 
then we try to simplify this first by bringing a 3 to the other side you get this and if you want to find an unknown which is indices you uh, besides using comparison we can also use logarithm which is easier in this case so we use logarithm we lock both sides here so i'll do this in the next slide so you have this you lock both sides why we are using logarithm is so that we can use the power law to bring n minus 1 to the front here becomes the coefficient of this value okay so i have this here using the power law i bring n minus 1 here then i can bring this to the right since this is multiplication when i, I move it, it becomes division so i get this but be careful when you move the values when you divide this with this you need to check the, the values whether it's a positive or negative by using your calculator or if you if you see this uh, see that the value is of this is more than one for log of base 10 if this value is more than one it is positive if it is less than one it is negative value okay so if this is a negative value you need to change the direction so in this case since the log base 10 of 2 here is a positive value when you move it direction of the symbol here remains then we move the negative one to the other side becomes plus one use a calculator find the values here you get n is greater than 3.737 but n is always a an integer so the smallest integer which exceeds 3.7 is 4 hence n equals to 4 so after we find the value of n the question asks us to find the smallest term means to find the value of the smallest term so in this case is to find the value of the fourth term t4 hence we substitute a and r with a3 and r2 and the n here is 4 4 minus 1 then we find the values of this we get the smallest term which exceeds 20 is the fourth term which has the value of 24 we can actually see from here you see from 3 to 6 you multiply by 2 6 times 2 you get 12 12 times 2 you get 24 24 will be the fourth term 24 exceeds 20 hence m equals to 4 and 4 is the smallest term of the geometric progression which exceeds 20 of course it is not uh, always as easy as this where you can where you can just list the numbers and find the values sometimes they'll give you a big number a big value here such that you need to use this method to help you to solve or to find the value of n hence this method here is very useful okay so this is the end of this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, everyone.